it given, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talk. Hey guys, it's me, Boy Genius, here, and today I'm gonna do a story time video. Because I did something today that maybe not every single one of you guys that are in my in my type of grade get to do. And who are in one of my types of classes. Okay, so first off, let me tell you this. Uh I'm in a class that's based around jobs. It's called it's called employability. Where you learn about jobs and then you, you know, you learn about jobs and then you try to look for one. Or they teach you how to apply for a job, where to go look for one at, you know. And, like, to look it up online type stuff. So, today, now, I, I, I think I already told you about my last one, if you guys remember... It is the one where I tell you about how I rode in the Taurus in the back seat. Yeah, go check that video out right now. I think I told everyone what happened and why I was in the car. So we took that same car again today. I sat up in the front. My friend Dylan sat in the back. But that's irrelevant though. So... We I woke up early in the morning around seven thirty, got up, brushed my teeth, and uh waited till eight ten, I wanna say. I think that's yeah, I left around eight ten, got there about almost eight twenty, I think. And then my friend Dylan also gets here. We didn't even bring our backpacks today. We didn't have to. But, yeah. So, me and my friend Dylan got there. We sat in class waiting for a little bit because our teacher had to go run around and do some errands. Well, not like run around town type errands, but like because uh, it's teacher related stuff. Anyway, so we get in the car. The three of us go to Aberdeen. We get there and. First place we stopped at was a place called South Dakota Department of Labor and Regulation. Now, what this, what we did there was like we sat down, you know, and we talked about stuff, kind of like an interview. Well, not like about how, what, what do we do for a living, but like we sat down for like a mock interview and I got. I got a folder, and I just got a whole bunch of stuff with, like, um, emails and, uh, booklets about the job. Uh, I'll have to show you guys that tomorrow to show you guys what I'm really talking about. So, we just sat there. We went over, like, we went over what the papers did and, you know... So then we sat down and we talked about like what we, what we wanted to do and what tips or something like about how to get there, like how to apply for that. I think I think that's what we did. Like, yeah. But like we sat in the little room that was kind of like mo like a like a place where you would go for an interview. Yeah, so we sat down and just looked at some papers as they were talking to us about, like, stuff that we wanted to do. Now, I wanted to do a radio station, radio DJ, and my friend, pretend like he's sitting right here. He's sitting right here. My teacher's sitting in the middle. And, like, I talked about how I wanted to be, like, the person working at a radio station, he wanted to be a wood, a word, uh, floor installer. So the teacher was like, eh, maybe he can, I can help him advertise for like, uh, wood w or floor installing. So I was like, hmm, yeah, that's like a good idea. That's a great idea. We can still be in touch with each other, you know. And then uh, we just sat down and talked more. I forgot about what, though. Like, 
So, like, we sat there and talked about, like, what I wanted to do for, like, the radio, the radio, working at the radio station. And then uh, one of the ladies knows, like, she knew one of the on-air talent, like, one of the people who go on air and stuff like that. All right, yeah, let me get on to the rest of the story. Because then, if I, the more I keep talking about this, we're, well, you know what, screw it. This video can be 20 minutes long if I really want it to. So, like, we were talking about how I wanted to be a radio DJ. And my friend wanted to be uh, a wood install, floor installer. Why do I keep calling it wood installer? I don't know why. But we were talking about it, and then things were going good. And, um, so yeah, we ended up shaking hands. Well, we did that, like, when we walked in, too. We sat there and waited for a little bit. And then the t- then the, the two ladies who were, uh, who were, who were with us, got, giving us a tour, like, when we sat down. Well, no, we didn't do a tour. We sat down and, like, talked. So, came in, handshaked. And then we went and did our thing, came out and handshaked. We're out the door to Walmart and um, did some, well, we, we, me and Dylan didn't really do anything, but uh, our teacher had to grab like some like pop tarts and stuff like that. Not too much stuff. It was like one bag, one to, no, three bags, I believe. So, yeah, we ended up checking out, and all of a sudden, this is where, this is one thing that that we didn't really expect to happen. So, like, we were at the self-checkout, we checked out, and then as we were doing it, we looked back, there was a guy on the floor, and we were like, no, Mr. Spicer was like, sir, are you okay, and... We had to go help him up, and uh, he dropped his hat, so I grabbed his hat, and I put it in the cart for him, so he didn't, he didn't have to reach, he didn't have to reach back down to, like, go get it, and, uh, there was a Walmart employee who came in, and there was another person who came in, he, they helped him get up as well, so, like, they put him, like, they sat him down, and then they waited for someone to go get a wheelchair. They got him out. And they helped him do whatever else. I didn't really see what the aftermath was other than us helping him up. So then we went to Subway. We sat down. Well, we didn't sit down. We had to order our stuff first. Hmm. This is going to be a long story, I know. So, like, I got a steak and cheese, like, a little steak and cheese sandwich. And it was toasted. Because I like it toasted. Mm-hmm. That was delicious. I like. I liked it. It was pretty good. So then I put tomato and let. They put tomato. I asked for tomato and lettuce. And ranch. They put it all on there for me. And then I got some Doritos. The little bag Doritos. And then, uh, it was a small mountain, it was a small mountain drink, I think. And I had Dr., no, I had cherry, I had cherry Coca-Cola, and then when I refilled it, I had Dr. Pepper. So, by the time we were done with this, it was like, almost 12 p.m. Or no, it was, it was 12 p.m., and then uh, we still had a little while before we can go to the radio station for our tour. And then we drove around Aberdeen for like a little bit. We went to the back. Like we were going to go look at uh, Wiley Park to see what it looked like in the snow. But like it wasn't opened. So we were like. Mr. Spicer said, like, oh, maybe we can go to the radio station and just sit in the parking lot for, like, a little bit. We ended up doing that. We So we turned around. We went back the same way we came to uh, the Wiley Park. 
And then we went to, then we drove through the the first half of Aberdeen, and then, and then we we went on to two eighty one for like a few miles, and then we turned on one of the little turnways. We on on two eighty one. We had we have these like little turnways to like that because there's like a side road with the houses and the radio station and the gas station and the, there was a super there's a super eight there so there was a little roadway to it so we took the little the half of the little roadway and went down to where the radio station was and boy i tell you i look up and i'm i'm in the car and i like look up and i'm like whoa transmitters are huge so I like I could barely see them because the car's like the roof was just like blocking the view, and I was like a big I'm I'm a big kid, so I, I like I like I'm like trying to look for them, and we sat there for a little bit. The radio is on, and we pull into the 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 station, and we heard nothing but like a whole bunch of mixtures of like music and people talking. Because, like, we were so close to the station's towers that, like, the radio was just going crazy because it was interfering, interfering, interfering with all the radio stations that were there. So we sat there and waited for a little bit. And then And then we went in, and then one of the DJs who were at the desk at the time... He walks up and he greets us and and one of the other the other radio DJs who who like on the station that I listen to it does the mornings. So like he gave us a tour of his like office. You know, it was just a typical office, but there was like papers and stuff. Because not only does he work for the or not only does he go on air for, like, the radio station that I listen to, but he also does, like, ESPN and Fox Sports. He's, like, the the narrator of what's going on and who's doing what. You know, like, you know what I'm talking about. So then we get a tour of all the stations. So, like, yeah, we get a tour of all the radio stations and... uh Oh man, there's like a whole bunch of computery stuff and the microphones that you hear people talk on when you're on the listen to the radio and pretty much everything well half of everything that like you that uh, people play the songs off of and the adverta- the advertisements are played off of pretty much is a computer. And like um the sound, some of the sounds and stuff like that are, like, on this, uh, equal, I think it's an equalizer. You know, those things that had the up and down and, like, the volume knob things? You guys, you guys, you guys get it? I don't know. Um, but, like, for, for one of the, one of the stations, like, there was... In one st- in one of the studios, two of the radio stations were together. Like all he had to do, all the, all the no, all the, hold on, all David Tukesbury, the person who does the, does the, some of the talking on some of our radio stations, he said. All we had to do was flip the switch and then it goes to to the station and then you flip and then he flips it back and it goes back to the other. I'm like, wow. I was like, I thought only one station can do can run off all this computer stuff. And he's like, nope, sometimes there's more than one. So I was like, that's pretty cool. So then we went on to one of the some of the other stations, and then the we went to the one in the very back, and the one in the very back had like 
um, sports stuff everywhere because it was the sports radio stations, Fox Sports and ESPN. And, uh, yeah, that's where he told us that he does some of the, some of the narration for the sports and stuff like that. And, like, um, so then while he was talking to us about the, how he, the first day that he started, he didn't know what did what at all. But he said somehow he figured it out. Probably because like there was like more than one person there. He he or his boss or someone helped him. Uh I don't know. But like um he was talking about I forgot where he said he came from and then he moved from I think he said he moved from another place, and then someone said, "Hey, you wanna? We're looking for someone here in Aberdeen who can do this." So he came down. He moved to Aberdeen and went to Hub City Radio, and he's been there since. He said he's been there. He's been at the station that I. He's been at the station for like four years, and yeah, I was like, not bad. And then. He's talking some more, and then I look, I look down, and I see this, like, blue machine thing, and I found, he told me that, um, no, I found out it said EAS on it, I'm like, is that the emergency, is that what the emergency alert system looks like? And he's like, yeah, and then he said, that thing stays on all night, all day. And the people who are, like, at the National Weather Service, there is one in Aberdeen. I just never showed you guys it before. But, like, he said that uh, whenever they tape an emergency, that thing turns on. And then it pauses all the programming and does the emergency alert system. Now I was like, that is some magical stuff right there, dude. Really. So, guys, like I said, he told me that whenever the people of the National Weather Service or the emergency alert place is, whenever they they uh, they do an emergency, that thing turns on and pauses all the programming to do the emergency alert. And then um, he also said that uh, we also went into this, like, room. There was, like, a whole bunch of computery stuff that... I guess they run the stations and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of like a, one of those rooms at your school that runs the entire school's internet. Like, think of it. Think of it. Like, think. Think of uh, what the those little LAN systems or whatever that run your school's internet. It looks just like that. that the room I've been in looks just like that. And he said, I don't... Because the stuff was so darn computery and confusing looking, he said, uh, he also, t he told us that, um, he doesn't ever mess, because of how hard the stuff looks, he never touches it or does anything with it. He he has, like, someone else who's more advanced with the type of technology that stuff is coming to help him, because he's afraid that he's gonna break something. And that I can totally agree with, like, I wouldn't even know what the heck to do with that, with that, with those electronics myself. I think I would do the same thing if I were the person who was on air during the morning time on the station that I listened to. And I, yeah. Um, then we go out of there, and the last... Oh yeah, I forgot. There was on the station that I listened to around seven PM to eleven PM the program this program named Party Playhouse with Jackson Blue comes on for like seven PM to eleven PM. But I I asked him like at around seven PM like how does the program like run? Does he have to come into the studio and do it? He's like, Nope. 
whoever is like outside the country, whatever program is running that's outside the country in the state, um, that all they had to do is go into the control room or that set up. And then they have to push the little, they, on one of the machines, there's like a button that he presses and then it sends a satellite signal to the person who's broadcasting in the other state. And then we receive their programming. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool too. Satellites and uh, transmitters, they can do some pretty cool things that, uh, that make us wonder, how does it work? How does that work? You know, and then um, when we were inside the Point FM, uh, the Point FM section of the building where they broadcast Point FM, that, that's the station I listen to, by the way. Like, if you guys Google it, it's 106.7 Point FM. And then you click on com, and then that's how you get Point FM, like the station that I listen to. And I look on the walls and stuff like that, and I see the this like um, welded like it looked like the a welded version of the logo, or it could have made been made from like one of those wood machines. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And Mr. Spicer also said, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that is. I do agree. That is. One of the coolest things that I've ever seen in here. And then uh, there's a... You know how... If you guys work in a radio station... Like, there's a... There's usually always a big poster with the station's logo. And stuff like that. But then when I, I looked over at the other side of it... There was like a really cool like Mustang GT350. And it's like... Ah, eh, don't ask me about that poster. I don't know a whole lot about cars. I'm like, okay, but I do admit, that is a nice poster. Uh, yeah. And then I look on the side of the, the other side, the next side, and there's a Point FM shirt. I'm like, I never knew y'all made your own merch. Well, I kind of did, because when we were, when we were in... The regular regulation place, labor of regulation, there was a cup, a mug that said Dakota 105.5. That's our country station here, by the way. So I'm like, hmm, I might have to buy that. But I don't know where I'm going to buy it, though. So, yeah. After that, we were walking out. Uh, one of the other on-air talent goes like, Bye guys, have a safe trip. We were also, we were also waving, and the lady at the front desk says, "Thanks guys for coming in." He's like, "You're welcome," and we were like, "No, we, no, like the lady. There was a lady sitting at the front desk of the radio station studios. She said, "Thank you guys for coming in," and we both said, "Bye, you're welcome." And then walking outside once again. I find myself looking up at the transmitter towers. I'm like, those are tall. And then we, uh, as we were leaving back on to 281, I, I turn on point FM to see if we were, see if we were mentioned and we weren't. And I'm like, oh, well. Well, guys, that's going to do for this very long story time. If you guys like, please subscribe. And like, or no, if you guys please like. Guys, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you all next time.